Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my little corner of the internet and today I want to talk about my absolute favorite Japanese drama, Tiger and Dragon. Tiger and Dragon! I am so happy this show is available on Netflix and with English subtitles, I have to share it with you. So I have been planning on making a video about what I call the holy trinity of J-dramas with this drama, Tiger and Dragon, being one of them. But I kept putting it off because the shows weren't available on streaming anywhere. And then things started to change a little bit, but still you can find all three uh, in a combination of like Amazon Prime, Netflix, or Disney Plus here in Japan, but there were no English subtitles. So I felt like there's no point in sharing it with you if you can't find it easily legally in a language that you can understand. If you can speak Japanese or understand Japanese, then what are you waiting for? Go watch Ikebukuro Westgate Park, Kisarazu Katsai, and of course, Tiger and Dragon. So go do that because you are missing out. But yes, since Tiger and Dragon is now available on Netflix with English subtitles. I'm going to make this video and instead of talking about all three dramas, I'm just going to talk about this one. And if the other ones show up with English subtitles anywhere in the future, I'll talk about them then. But just know they are somewhat connected, not by plot by any means, but like actors mostly, themes, and of course the living legend himself, the writer, creator, producer, director, Kudo Kankuro. I have mentioned Kudo Kankuro in the past. Please check out the video. It's gonna be up here somewhere where I just fangle or fangirl him for like a minute straight. I love him. I think he is a creative genius in how he conceptualizes his themes and how he puts them on screen. It's incredible and it's just amazing. He focuses a lot on extremely dark underlying themes and yet he is able to have tons of joy and laughter and comedy on top of it, not in a disrespectful way. You can very clearly see like a coping mechanism in there and just how people live their lives. You don't just focus on the tragedy that's at hand, you, you live your life and the tragedy is underneath. I think if you look chronologically at his dramas, they start a lot darker and he kind of learns to refine things to make them more lighthearted in a way, but none of them shy away from death, organized crime, sex work, violence, immigration, very, very good stuff underneath the surface of silliness and absurdity. Kudo Kankuro focuses a lot on people that you would consider sidelined or marginalized, even shunned by society. Most of the characters are either low working class or actual criminals, and a lot of his main characters would not be considered good people. So yes, okay, enough rambling, let's dive into one of the best J-dramas, if not the best J-drama that I have ever seen and that you can also enjoy. I'm so happy about it. <laughs> so yes, Tiger and Dragon originally aired in 2005 and stars Tomoya Nagase as Toraji. He's an extremely unfunny and quite boring Yakuza member who falls in love with Rakugo, which is traditional Japanese storytelling. He then becomes a student of Rakugo in the Hayashiate house. He tries to learn these stories, but seeing as he's pretty bad at it, he recruits the help of Ryuji, the excommunicated son of the head of house, who is actually a Rakugo genius, but currently owns this failed clothing store in Harajuku. With Ryuji's help, Toraji learns to apply Rakugo stories to real life, and as a result is able to retell these stories in his own unique unique way. Each episode is structured in an entirely unique Kudokan 
way. He does similarly clever things in his other dramas, but here the way it goes is you have the main storyline, then we get to hear a classic Rakugo story, and it is then visually blended into what we see on screen. So we kind of get to see a mini period drama. Then while we see the actual episode and story unfold, parts of the story start to align with the classic story, which finally results in us being retold the classic story but with the modern twist. So in a way we get to see the same story told twice in one episode but one is the Rakugo classic and the other is what actually happens in the episode and what later helps move the plot along. Kudokan really likes doing that. The other two dramas I mentioned in the Holy Trinity, Ikebukuro Westgate Park and Kisarazu Katsai, have similar devices built into their stories. It is really interesting and just makes you th see things in a new light or new perspective. I personally adore this style of storytelling, which is why I like all three of these dramas. In this show, we get to experience the extremely traditional side of Japanese culture, but in a way that is not overbearing or inaccessible. I still think there is a higher bar of accessibility here because if you're not used to Japanese names, for example, each character here gets two names. They have like their regular name that they're born with and then they have their Nakugo performer name. So Toraji becomes Kotora and Ryuji becomes Kotatsu. And so it's a lot of names to keep up, keep up with. And then there's later on the whole concept of handing your name to the next person very very traditional Japanese things but I don't think it's inaccessible I just think it's a little higher bar of and tree than regular completely modern Japanese dramas. It's an educational moment if you will. So yes this drama it, it's funny and creative and really emphasizes that these Nakugo stories can still be relevant today. The cast is made up of some of my personal favorite actors. As I mentioned earlier Tomoya Nagase, love him. Nagase is my favorite Japanese actor. He can be super serious but also incredibly stupid and his collaborations with Kudokan particularly are always top-notch. Then we have Junichi Okada. He plays Ryuji and I mentioned him in my Hell Dogs review as one of the reasons why I watched the movie. He's also an incredible actor. He knows when to be subtle and when to go absolutely 125%, absolutely ham, chewing the scenery. It's great. In addition to these powerhouses, who also mind you, have incredible chemistry and are just a joy to watch together on screen. We have the absolutely adorable Aoi Yu. I love this woman. Uh, you may know her from the Ruroni Kenshin live actions. She played Megumi and she did it so well. Then we also have Takashi Tsukamoto as Ginjiro. He was in Battle Royale, so if you've watched that movie, you know his face. He's in there. But yeah, everyone is great. Misaki Ito as Megumi is hilarious. She manages to be really stupid, but also incredibly clever. A beautifully ridiculous role, honestly. The rest of the supporting cast is absolutely perfect. They all play these oddballs, over-the-top characters, but in the most endearing way. And I mentioned chemistry between Nagase and Okada, but really the chemistry between all of the actors is just beautiful. They manage to portray this completely dysfunctional, yet incredibly loving family. And the Yakuza gang members also like are just really endearing and funny and kind of ridiculous, obviously. So it's just really a joy, pure joy to watch. I, I laugh, I cry. I spend the majority of the time watching this show just being like, I love that the majority of the supporting characters are just like the neighboring shop owners and the people that come to watch the Rakugo performance and they're all a bit weird but very friendly. I think the biggest issue that the show has is blatant misogyny which is it's a big issue but it's 
something that if you want to get into Japanese shows, you're gonna have to kind of deal with, unfortunately. On top of that, you add like a very traditional mindset between both the Yakuza and Rakugo, which is just completely traditional Japanese art. There's just a lot of sexism involved, and so the female characters can come off as extremely two dimensional. So just be prepared for it. Even though it's very blatant and can be a little painful, it doesn't ruin the show. In addition, I mentioned Yakuza earlier, but Kudokan does this very common Japanese thing where we get good Yakuza and bad Yakuza. Because if you want to have a comedy, with Yakuza as your main character, you tend to want them to not be the worst, but they're still criminals. So you have this weird line that Japan has decided where like bad Yakuza, they deal with guns and drugs. Good Yakuza don't. They only deal in protection money, loans and prostitution, which is apparently perfectly fine. That is really weirdly common in Japan and Nagase plays that role a lot. See My Boss, My Hero, another perfect Japanese drama. But yeah, it tends to be like a thing. You know, tropes are tropes, I guess. But anyway, at the end of the day, this show is about friendship, family, loyalty, following your dreams, following your passions, putting your own pride aside for the sake of yourself and others, and all of that in 12 episodes. So it's very efficient. <laughs> the first episode is an hour and a half long though, so just be ready. Bonus points for those of you planning to come to Japan. The majority of the show takes place in two very famous neighborhoods in Tokyo, Harajuku and Asakusa. So while Luji's shop is not actually a real place, the Rakugo theater is, and you can actually go and buy a ticket and watch a Rakugo performance. I personally have been putting this off for 11 years now, which is really stupid, but I fully intend to go this year and I'll report back after I do. So if you are interested in watching something wholly Japanese that is also funny, heartwarming, sad, exciting, educational, and generally just a great time, consider watching Tiger and Dragon. It's the best. You won't regret it. Hey, tiger, tiger, jilet, tiger. <laughs> if you have a favorite Japanese drama, I would love to hear about it. Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you could press that like button or the dislike button, it's fine. And gently press the subscribe button while you're at it. Check out some of my other videos over here and I will see you next time. Bye!